Guy Ritchie is back in theaters this week with his brand new action flick, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. This is about the British military who recruits a small group of highly skilled soldiers who are a little bit of a ragtag group to strike against German forces behind enemy lines during World War II. This is, of course, based on a true story. Again, it's directed by Guy Ritchie, who has been on an absolute kick the last couple of years with films such as The Covenant. Wasn't the biggest fan of that. I know a lot of you guys did like that one and of course other flicks like operation fortune and wrath of man and countless others like he has just been really finding that nice soft spot after making aladdin and i've been really enjoying this kind of nice resurgence of guy ritchie films usually when one of his films are coming out i know i'm probably gonna go watch it and actually really like it and when you say that he's gonna be teaming up with the likes of henry cavill and Alan Richardson, who both alone deserve their own starring vehicle. I know Alan Richardson has Jack Reacher, but when it comes down to the movie verse, we deserve more of them in movies. I'm excited to talk about the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare today, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section, as well as, of course, hit that like and subscribe button for more movie reviews over here on a daily basis. But with every movie review, I like starting with the pros, and that's what we're going to start with today, is discussing the pros of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And the first thing I want to talk about is just flat-out Guy Ritchie. This kind of harkens back to some of his old original Guy Ritchie flair but more taking place into the World War II timeline and that's kind of nice because the Covenant was a little bit different than what Guy Ritchie typically does. Operation Fortune kind of felt like a lackluster experience of Guy Ritchie. Still entertaining for sure, but not really his own flair. And Wrath of Man was a unique twist on the Guy Ritchie tone and thrilling editing that he typically puts into his storytelling. The ministry kind of brings back that old school rock and roll -a snatch and of course, many other Guy Ritchie films. That editing style, that storytelling devices telling between two different ways to tell a unique and interesting aspect of a World War II story that maybe you've seen before. And that's not to say that this is the most unique and most original World War II story. Not at all. In a way, this kind of is the best comparison is Guy Ritchie's Inglorious Bastards, which I love Inglorious Bastards. It's arguably top three Tarantino films of all time. And to see Guy Ritchie kind of take a flair on that is nice. It's just this is the more action heavy version of Inglorious Bastards. And actually watching the film, I know there's always been a lot of debate and a lot of rumors that a Call of Duty movie may be made one day. And I think no one's really ever said Guy Ritchie to make a Call of Duty film. But like if this was his audition to do it, he should take it. The band of characters he has here kind of reminds me of some of the more modern warfare stuff that we have nowadays. I like how he gets their banter, their charisma, and as well as just how he shoots the action in here. It kind of reminds me of a not as explosive Michael Bay and a little bit more restrictive, and I dug that because it's just slick. It's nice, and to see the shots and how he does the action, it's enjoyable. Like, there, there's one part towards the third act where you just see, like, Henry Cavill strolling on through, and he sees, like some Nazis and he just pops them and just continues to do that which maybe gets a little bit repetitive and we'll talk about that but it's one of those few things that I was like yeah I really dig that and speaking of Henry Cavill man I'm so happy to see that he has a starring vehicle here I mean if you followed me for a while you know that I love him as Superman and I'm going to miss him him as Superman and I wish he had another chance but to see him kind of further out here and continue into a different type of career I like seeing this as his film coming off back and kind of being like yes I can do more than just Superman and he's very unhinged in here like his character can be calm and collected but at the same time like he just has this little crazy and kooky tone to him that's not over the top and it's just kind of perfect honestly which was Quite surprising. Alongside that, Alan Richardson is great in here. He is like maybe one of the shining parts of this. I wish we got a little bit more of his character, even though we do have a lot of him in here, specifically in the action department. And just some of the action moves in here just reminded me of Batman. So 
Let's cast him as the DCU James Gunn's Batman, please. A couple other big standouts in here is Isaiah Gonzalez, who I think just is absolutely nailing it in these roles. A little bit different than what I expected her character to be, but as it went on, she has the more serious part of this entire storyline, and I thought that was quite appreciative. I really like Carrie Elway, Henry Golding, Babs, Alex Pettifer, Hero, Tiffin, and so many more. I mean, the whole cast in here just plays up to that T and I had a blast with them all. And the thing that I really liked about it all is that everyone really has this unhinged tone to them, but it all plays out into the same way that Henry Golding's did, which is a little bit of a serious tone as well. You, They ride this nice fine balance that you have this misfits band of brothers who you can tell are a little bit over the top, but not too much. And while I found that Henry Cavill did the perfect striking nature of it all, I think all of them do just enough to make you really fall for this characters, even though they don't go too deep into it. And, and that's where I want to say is that the ministry is just a fun time at the movies. It's entertaining for what it is, and you're going to enjoy it because it's got blood, it's got Nazis getting killed, and it has an excellent cast and some fun Guy Ritchie storytelling but it's not going to blow you out of the park. And, and that's kind of where I can get down to my issues and some of my mixed aspects, which is just the story is unoriginal. You, you've seen it all before. Uh, alongside that, the pacing is pretty lackluster at times. Like, And I think that pacing comes down to just overall the two-hour runtime. I found that the film probably had a nicer sweet spot around an hour and 40, hour and 45 minutes. I think it comes down to some of the action set pieces in the third act. Because overall, the third act is very much set piece heavy. Just a lot of moments in there where you just see them honestly doing the exact same thing them walking around shooting a nazi popping them and putting a bomb and honestly i could have gotten a little bit less of that or a little bit more creative action set pieces in there there's certain things in here with alex pedifier and alan richardson which are just badass like alan richardson has like probably one of my favorite moments in the entire third act and i loved it i wish there was just a little bit more of that primarily with henry cavill's character and the way that he was just kind of strolling up the beach a lot of fun moments but some of it just kind of felt okay let's let's move on let's get to the next part kind of feel that in certain parts of the film where you're enjoying it but you feel like maybe you should be enjoying it a little bit more. But that's where I have to say is that the ungentlemanly warfare is Guy Ritchie at his most violent. Uh, honestly, it might be his most violent film yet. A bloody good time that lets Henry Cavill, Alan Richardson, Henry Golding and company just go completely unhinged, but not over the top unhinged. It is a very nice and fine line here, and I absolutely had a blast with this. I think you should absolutely give Henry more leading roles like this. I think he excels in them. I'm very happy to see that Guy Ritchie's next film is also starring Henry Cavill and my boy Jake Gyllenhaal, so that's just gonna be a perfect mix right there. Overall, I like the movie. I think you will too if you go into it and knowing what you're gonna get. A little bit of a surface level film, but it's one that you're just gonna go in and and want some bloody good action and a good just time at the films and you're gonna get that with all that i'm gonna give the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare a b thank you so much again guys for watching this make sure to hit that like subscribe button and of course until next time stay classy